welcome everybody to today's Results Now workup session. Uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce to you today's speaker, Lorena Panama. Lorena is the Global Partner Marketing Manager at Acronis. With over 15 years of marketing experience with top telcos uh, and software companies, she helps drive business-to-business -business market marketing initiatives, partner marketing strategies, and co-marketing campaigns. Lorena spe specializes in nurturing partner relationships, developing through partner marketing content, and driving custom communication strategies. With degrees in both marketing and engineering, she confidently delivers the right tools, resources, and insights to help partners achieve their goals. Over to you, Lorena. Thank you, Marcela, for the kind introduction. Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's workshop. I'm very excited to have you join us here today to be able to show you the great set of resources that we have available for you to leverage with just a few clicks of the buttons. So I am going to be demoing some stuff here directly from my computer. You can follow along if you like from yours, uh, or you can just um, look at what I'm going to be showing. I am going to first start um, with our agenda. I want to show you what we're going to be covering today. So let me get my clicker. First, I'm just going to do a general introduction of why we're here. Um, then I'm going to do a quick overview of our partner portal. Then I'm going to show you just some tips and tricks on how to set up your account for success, stuff that you can do from the get-go to make sure that it's easier to use afterwards. Then um, some directly going into the marketing automation tools and how to use that. So that's where you can follow along with me if you want. You can log into the portal and follow with me. I'm going to show you our content hub and the great assets that we have available for you there. Um, I'm also going to show this great resource that we have in the portal that is a demo lab. And finally, some time for Q&A. So please hold your questions till the end. I'll try to leave enough time so that we can have um, some some questions towards the end. Now, why are we here? You may be asking yourself, one session on marketing, I'm not doing a lot of marketing and things are going okay for me. Or maybe you're starting to think, I need to do marketing, I wanna know what available resources out, are out there. And actually, there's a really big importance in marketing in our industry. For starters, there's a huge opportunity. There's never been a more exciting time than now to be in the MSP business. That's basically because it's really growing exponentially. So in 2021, it was worth around $243 billion. By 2026, it's expected to be worth $353 billion. And that's because the MSP industry has gained a stronghold, um, basically brought on by the pandemic, in which there's a lot of businesses looking for managed services. This was accelerated by the pandemic and that trend continues. So there's really in the market a need for managed services. And a recent survey by Datto shows that nearly 100% of MSPs that were surveyed said that now is a good time as ever to be in this industry. So this is not something that is slowing down. The, the opportunity continues to grow. Now, with opportunities, of course, there's always challenges. And the same Datto survey said that marketing and sales continue to be the top two pain points of global MSPs. Why? Well, one, the MSP market is extremely competitive. So yes, we have this huge opportunity, but we have huge competition. So there's really a need to stand out from the competition and attract customers. And you might be performing really well with word of mouth referrals. Those for sure are gonna be your best leads, right? These are people that are coming to you looking for your service. So that's really great because those are probably your easiest leads to close and it doesn't take a lot of work. But what's gonna happen is at some point, you're going to reach a plateau with referrals, right? And it's just gonna be probably enough to keep up with the natural customer attrition, and it's not gonna be enough to reach all your potential clients. So you definitely need a marketing strategy to be able to reach all of the potential clients out there. Now, this is where we come to what is our approach on this. So 
something very important about marketing in the MSP industry. And I know that marketing and sales tend to kind of overlap, um, but when you're talking about marketing in the MSP industry, you're trying to gain the trust of this customer in the service you provide and educate them in the service that you provide. So marketing activities can help you connect with that target audience that you have. And it can help you convert potential clients into customers. But it also helps you engage with your existing customers because you do have to stay top of mind and you have to uh, be present. So what you're trying to do here is to educate your target audience instead of focusing on sales. If you focus on gaining that trust, then that will speed up the sales cycle. And basically, this is the quote that I have for you here. By educating prospects about the value of your services, you increase that trust that you're trying to build in those prospects. And then the sales cycle will be um, much smoother and faster. So I think right now it's time for our first poll throughout the session, because I want to make it interactive. I also want to make sure that you guys are awake. Um, we'll be running some polls. Um, it's up on the screen. It's completely anonymous, so please feel free to answer uh, as truthfully as possible. You take your phone, you scan that QR code, and you um, vote. So we should start seeing those answers coming in. All right, I think everybody's kind of voted through. So a lot of you using the portal to access training, I see that. Also, a lot of you not using the portal. So hopefully after today's session, you'll be more inclined to use it, and you'll see the great tools that are available for you there. Um, let me get right to the portal overview. So I'm going to be switching from my deck to, um, to the portal. If, if you haven't, um, if you haven't created your account, that's probably the first thing I'm going to ask you to do. So let me just show you um, how that works. So you can, there's two options. If you already have your account, you're just going to log in. But if you haven't registered your company, or you haven't registered, there's two options. If you know your company has a portal account, then you're going to want to go in to partners.acronis.com and use the join existing company. This will make sure that your account is created under your company's account. It will go to your portal, your company's portal admin, and they will approve you. If your company doesn't have an account at all and you're going to be creating it for the first time, then you have to use the option to sign up as new company. Now, if you already have an account, and I hope most of you do, you're just going to want to log in. So, can we make sure that my screen is on? I'm just seeing my deck. Thank you, guys. Not seeing the screen, just my deck. Can you make sure it's on? It's on my screen. Just seeing my deck right now. Let me close this out, maybe that'll do it. There we go. All right, so on the portal right now, what we're gonna do is sign in. I was showing you before, if you're creating a whole new account, sign up new company. If you know your company has an account and it's just your account that you're gonna create, join existing company. In this case, we're gonna go in and just sign in. All right, so next, I just wanna provide you a quick overview of what the partner portal looks like. Um, something really important that I want, to, want you to keep in mind, the portal is customized to your partner level, to your partner type, and to your user type. So what you see in the partner portal is information that is relevant to you, whether it be promotions, news, events, everything is going to be based on your, again, partner level, partner type, and user type. In this case, this is a dummy account I'm using for today's purposes, but it is a service provider, which is platinum, and which is an admin. So that's the account that I'm using today. So let me show you um, what the portal looks like. On the left-hand side, 
you'll find our navigation menu. And that likely looks very familiar to you because it's very much like our product UI. And that is what you're gonna use to navigate through our partner portal. You can go through all of the different sections right here um, on the left. Now I wanna show you first the dashboard because this is where you're gonna land. This is like your home page. And this is gonna show you the blueprint of your business with Acronis. And a lot of the sections are similar to all users. Some might change, so let me go quickly through that. Um, so up here, you're gonna see your information. You're gonna be able to see your profile here. Then you're gonna have the onboarding widget. And we really recommend everybody to follow the onboarding because it'll make you more familiar with the uh, portal. You can follow the steps here and it'll show you um, the progress. Depending on whether you're sales or marketing, you're also gonna be able to see several other widgets regarding market development funds, deal registration. Um, if you've set up your business plan, it'll be here as well. If you're managing renewals, um, they'll all show here. Then everybody sees this what's new section, and this again <coughs> is tailored to your user type, to your region, and to your partner type. So you'll have news, events, and promotions, and they're all relevant to you. And then we have the support and assistant widget, which will have your information, so it'll have um, your partner account manager information. And then down at the bottom, we have also a widget for the content hub. So that's basically what the, um, what the partner portal looks like. Now, I want to go back to my deck because I want to show you, I was mentioning that access is given according to user types. And I just want to quickly brush through this. An admin will have access to all of the sections in the partner portal. And in the profile, not only to their personal profile, but also to the company profile to be able to set up stuff there. And then depending on the other user types, marketing, sales, and technical, there will be some things that are available to you and some that are not. So it's very important to understand your user type when you're um, setting up for the portal. Now in this case, because we're gonna be talking about marketing, then this, when we go into the marketing automation tools, the user type to be, access this has to be marketing. All right, so now second poll that we're gonna run today like I said, we're gonna do a few. They're pretty quick, so I'll ask you to take your phone again and scan. Um, and I just wanna know how often you come into the partner portal. I know some of you aren't, so um, that I don't use the partner portal might come up again, but I just wanna understand how often you, you visit the portal. Okay, so there's a nice mix there of once a quarter, more than once a week, once a week. Um, I really want to say it's important for you to visit the portal and go in and look at the updated information we have there. Remember, price lists are also posted there. Promotions will be there. So there's a lot of information, and we work really hard to make sure that this is updated. So assets are also uploaded on a weekly basis. So there's a lot of relevant information for you available there. Let me go and show you um, now some some tips and tricks on setting up your account for success. So back into where I've signed in, I wanna show you where you set up a few things to make sure that it runs smoother afterwards and this is stuff that you complete now and it saves you time later. So you go to a profile and you hit this edit button right there and it'll load your profile. So this is, and you'll see there's two tabs. There's company and there's user. This is an admin, so I'll be able to edit both and show you that. But let's start with the user profile and the stuff that you can edit there. For starters, um, you can upload your photo. So let me show you how to do that. You, with just a few clicks, you upload it. Here I have a sample picture just to upload there. You select it, now it's been uploaded, and it'll appear again in the images that you have available. And you hit this plus button right here, and now you'll have your profile picture. 
Um, you could also do a personal signature if you want. So if you're going to be attaching that to some emails and you want it to be like a specific um, signature, you could do that. But what I really recommend that you make sure is filled out is this, first name, last name, your email, your phone, job title, because a lot of the templates that we have are going to take that information and pre-populate it for you, so you don't have to do that later. Also here, you can set up your email notification preferences. So if you want to get tips, news, and occasional promotional offers from us, you just hit that toggle. Um, and if you want to get email updates about non-critical activities in the portal, you can um, just set up your preferences here. Now, you can also set your location. So if your workplace, say you're not based where your main office is, you can also hit this toggle here and then just put your information of where you're based. Then another important part here is setting up social network accounts. We have social media automation tools. You need to make sure that your social media accounts are set up. And it's, I've already done it in this account to save some time, but it's very easy. You click activate and it'll basically prompt you to put in your social media credentials and sync the account. And probably the most important part here and what I want to highlight is portal settings. So this is where you're able to put in your time zone. You're able to put in the date and time format that you prefer. You're able to put in your default language. The default language is what the UI is going to show, right? So if you want it in Spanish, the whole UI is going to show in Spanish. That's what this does, right? And we have it in a lot of, of languages because this is meant to be a global tool. And then the other really important one is language preference for assets. So here I always recommend, regardless of where you are, to always have one, English, because the stuff that we produce in terms of content first comes available in English, so that way you know what's coming and what's going to be available soon. Or if you see something really valuable, you can always reach out to your PAM and say, I saw this asset in English. I think it's great. When is it going to be available in French? Right? And then here's where you would do, um, I would say, the other language preference. So if you are working in the Latin American market and you want to see assets in Spanish, you would set Spanish there and make sure that that's there so that you also see what we already have localized um, in, in your language. So once you're all set, you would come up here and hit save. So any time you make changes, you have to make sure to save. And that is for the, for the user profile. Now, I want to show you how to do the company profile. Again, this will be available only to the admin. So whoever has admin rights on the company um, account will be able to do this. And the first thing I want to show you is how to upload your logo. Because again, if you do this now, when you're working with marketing automation tools and you're going to send an email or you're going to send a data sheet, or it can take from there and do it automatically for you. So again, it's pretty simple. You want to select an image, so you're going to go upload it. And I have a sample logo right here. I really recommend that you look for a logo that has a white background or a clear background, because since this is going to be put into other materials, it's going to look better that way. So now that it's uploaded, it will show here in your images. And this keeps popping up. Um, and then you just hit the plus button to add it. And there it is. It's already there. And in here, you can also update the company information, same information we have um, in the user profile, but about the company. So email, phone number, website. It's really important here, I want to mention the registered domains. So if you're an admin for your company, make sure that you put the registered domain so that when another colleague wants to join an existing company, it'll recognize that domain. If domains aren't registered there, then that functionality won't work. Um, and then you're just, you can put all of the information here. You're all also able to add social, social media accounts here. 
And if you already know, for example, for content personalization, specific colors to use and things like that, you're able to put that all here. So I'm gonna go hit save. And now we've covered um, all of the setup of the profile that you should do first. Um, now, I wanna show you one other thing that is only available to admins, but I think is really important. As part of the partner program benefits, from authorized level and above, you're able to be listed in our partner locator. What that means is, on our website, if a partner, I'm sorry, if a customer is looking perhaps for a provider, so they go to our partner locator and depending on where they are, it'll geolocalize and it'll show you all of the partners available in that region and that way they can see who's available and they might be able to reach out to you. So for, to be able to, um, to appear there, you have to do a setup here and partner locator. First, you have to opt in. We can't put you there if you haven't agreed to be listed through our partner locator. So the first thing that you would need to do is to enable that, right? Make sure that you, we have your okay to um, post your information. And then the other thing that is now available is you can customize the information that is shown on the partner locator. So to make sure that it's your commercial name, uh, maybe you want a specific phone number to show, a specific website, you're able to put that all here. And it doesn't affect what you already put in your profile. This is basically what you want us to show in our partner locator. And you can set that up all here. And once all changes are done, then basically you just hit save and would be done. All right. Um, next, I want to show you how to import your contacts into the partner portal because this will save you time later. And it's very simple, few steps. So you go to database management and you go to import. Now you're allowed 5,000 contacts. That's a pretty okay database. Um, and you can do it in several ways. You could go like one by one and put emails in. Um, I'm gonna show you today how to do it with a CSV file. It's the way that I find easier. It's what I recommend that you do. For that, you will have to prepare a file in advance. So let me show you what I have here just as a sample. At a minimum, you have to have name, last name, and email, right? At a minimum. Um, you can add as many variables as you want that you have. So if you have phone, if you have maybe state or country or company, you can add all of the stuff that you want. And I'll show you now how to, how to upload it. So like I said, I'm choosing import CSV and the wizard takes you through the steps, right? So you're going to have to upload it. Again, it's the same steps that we've done before for like the picture. Um, you select your file, you hit open. So once it's there, Then you select your file, and then you gotta do field mapping. Okay, and the first thing is, I will need you to verify that these contacts that you're uploading actually wanna receive communications from you, right? I mean, you own this list, we don't see it, we don't manage it, but you need to verify that they've opted in to receive communications from you. All right, then, you need to do the field mapping. And here you'll see that most of the fields that I have are already mapped. So I had last name, it's green, it's mapped, email address, so most of them are already done. But in my file, I had name instead of first name, so you'll see that's not mapped. If it's unmapped, then you can just quickly pull the drop down, and here's where I'll select name, and it's done. Right, now it's gonna be mapped. So those are all of the fields that I had. And once everything is set, you click finish. And that's it, you've imported your contacts. Um, it'll take a little bit to sync, but you're, it's queued as you can see. So in a second this will be done and your contacts will be there. 
And this will save you time later when you're trying to send stuff out, your list is already there. You don't have to be scrambling to do it. You're like set up to already um, use the marketing automation tools. And there, you see, it's completed, right? So this might take longer if your list is longer, but right now, as you can see, it was just a couple minutes. And that way, you're going to be able to use not only the marketing tools, but also there's an email blast for the sales team. They'll be able to use this as well. So you're already, um, you're already set up. I think we have a third poll coming up. So it's going to come up on the screen in a second. Um, this is about marketing. And I just want to, there's no right or wrong answer. I just want to get a feel for the room in terms of what you're doing for marketing, right? Do you have a marketing team? Do you have a marketing person? Maybe you have a split resource. Maybe you outsource it, or maybe you're not doing marketing at all. That's all fine. Just want to understand a little bit. OK, good. Like I said, there's no right or wrong answer here. Um, and I know that a lot of MSPs don't have a marketing team or are just starting off and are looking for a way to do marketing that's not too costly and that's easy to set up and efficient. So that's what I want to show you today. Um, what I do want to say is regardless of what you answered here, if you're looking to learn more about um, marketing, we have this resource for you. Marketing 101, it's um, a course that we have within the portal. It's the fundamental ways to market your services. It's, on the one hand, we have a set of tutorials, so five tutorials that you can take at your own pace just to learn the basics about marketing. Um, and the good thing is, like I said, this is for anyone. You don't have to be a marketing expert to take these tutorials, right? This is about the fundamentals. And then, you also have the option to explore a set of resources that are available. So there's actionable things that you can do to start building your marketing out, right? To know um, your personas, uh, to maximize your impact. So that's available in the portal, and it's you can take it whenever you like. I am now going to then jump into our marketing automation tools and show you how to use them. So. They're all located here under marketing. This is the list of all of the automation tools that we have. And I'm going to start you off today with an email blast. An email blast is a simple email. We have templates built out for you that you send out to your database to open up a conversation, to stay top of mind with the customers that you already have, basically to get your foot in the door, right? It's just a simple email, and let me show you how to send one of those. You go to Email Blast, and don't get scared if it shows up empty like this. This is because in this account, I've never done anything, right? What you have to do is you have to hit Compose. And that will pull up all of the available templates for you. It's important to keep that in mind. So if you're a service provider, these templates are going to be directed at a service provider that wants to talk to their customers, right? If you were, for example, a reseller, then you would have a different set of templates. If you're a hybrid partner, you will have both. So the, the thing about setting up your profile and your preferences is that it'll show you the relevant information here as well. So I'm just going to, I'm going to pick one email here. And the wizard takes you through the steps. So I picked my template. Now it's going to take me to the email editor. And as that loads, you're going to be able to edit here. So you see the logo is already there. It'll take my first name, last name, and all of my information, and it'll pull it here already because I filled it in my profile. You can change any of the, contact, uh, of the content if you like, but these emails are basically set up and ready for you to send. Um, you can preview it if you like. You could maybe test it. So if you want to make sure that everything is OK, you can test it and probably send it to yourself. I'm not going to do that to um, save some time. But if everything is ready to go, then you hit the next one. 
and you go to send email. And here's where you set up your email, setting, email sending preferences. So you can change the from address, right? Maybe you want to send it on behalf of someone else on your team, or you have an other address that you want to use. You can set that up here. Um, the reply to address you can also change. So maybe you want to send from one address and receive replies on another. You can do that. Um, you could change the subject if you like. Um, you could attach files, so all of that you can do. Um, and here is where you would um, add your, um, your contacts. So you can add them right here. So if you added your list, it'll start populating here. And you can add them there. Or you could choose to send to the entire list. So those are options that you have. And then you can also choose to save a draft. Maybe you're not ready to finish yet. You want to leave it as a draft. You could choose to send now, or you could choose to schedule. Say, for example, you want to send it on a specific date. You want to have it ready, and I want to send it next week um, on, I don't know, um, Monday the 14th at 10 AM. You're able to set that up right here. So you can have that pre-prepared and ready to go. So in this case, I am just going to add a couple more addresses here, just to show you what it would look like. And I'm going to send it now. And I'm going to hit Finish. So you confirm that you want to send it, and that email will go out. And we're going to give it a minute. It's going to be sent shortly, because I want to show you once you send it, you're going to be able to see here who you, sent it for, for, um, who you sent it to, and then you're also going to be able to see opens and clicks. So you're going to get a report from your email send right here. Let's see if that already came through. There we go. So you see it right there. You can see who it was sent to, the name of the email, the subject line, and you'll see how many were sent. So if, for example, someone was to open the email that I sent right now, you would be able to see it here as well, right? It'll show you who opened and what links were clicked, if links were included, right? You can always choose to not include links. But um, that is your email blast report right here. Um, now, this, like I said, was a single email. We also have something called email drip campaigns. Now, email drip campaigns are two or more related emails about the same topic that you want to send to one single person. So you'll send one, um, and then at least you'll have one follow-up, right? So you could maybe send a data sheet or a white paper and then follow up on that, and that, those would be your two touches. Or we have some more complex campaigns that are, are more than two emails, and the emails are set up to be sent in a specific order, one after the other. So this is how you do, this is where you see the email drips, and you'll be able to see here in the cards how many emails there are. So you see it says two emails, and there's one delay. So there's one delay between the emails. I'm going to show you how to do this from a marketing campaign. Marketing campaigns are kits that we have prepared for you on a specific topic that have more than one asset that you can use to generate demand. So I want to show you how to use those, and I'll show you how to set up an email drip from there. So let me go to Marketing Campaign Playbooks. You'll find a few there. Um, I am going to choose Email Security. So like I said, this is a kit, a marketing kit that has several assets around a specific topic that you can use together. They're packaged together. This one has a data sheet, a mini nurture campaign, which is uh, just this, a different name for the email drip, right? A couple of emails to send on the same topic. It has a landing page and web banners. And I'm going to walk you through setting all of this up. Um, um, because I want to attach a data sheet to the email, I'm going to start with that one first. So. You can click on the data sheet and have a preview. 
it'll show you what you're going to be able to edit. So here you're going to be able to add your logo. And here at the bottom, you're going to be able to place your contact information. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, I am going to download it. And now we're going to edit it. Hold on, I have to open it from my computer actually. So let's go to downloads. Okay, so this is editable for you. You're just going to click the image uh, placeholder, and that's where you would add your logo. So I am going to do that now. And then your logo is already added. And then here is where you would place your contact information. So name, email, phone, website, right? Everything that you want to put in here for contact information, you can edit. And one tip I want to give you on here, don't save it directly, because if you save it, this file will still be editable, and you don't want to send an editable file to your customers, right? So what you have to do is you have to print it. So print to PDF. And then I would say keep it handy somewhere because you're going to use it later and give it a name that you would want uh, to reference for it to be simple. Right now I'm just going to name it sample PDF for my ease to show you here. Okay, so that is saved and now we're going to be able to use it in our email. So. Let me show you how to send the emails from this nurture drip. So when you go here, you're going to see two things. The first one is a quick start guide. The quick start guide is a document we've put in there for it to be your guide to do this, right? So basically, it walks you through the steps that I'm walking you, uh, walking you through now. Uh, but it's for your self-consultation, right? You can have that there while you're setting this up. These are just the steps to follow. And right next to it is our mini nurture campaign. So we're going to click that to set it up. And the editor is very much like we did in the email blast. Um, you can choose to name this differently if you want. If That's completely up to you. I'm not going to change it now. Um, and then you go to the editor. Now, the editor is going to show you that there's two emails with a delay in the middle. You can change this delay if you want. So we have it set up for five days. Maybe you want to do it in a week or in three days. This is completely customizable to however you want to run this. Um, and then you're able to edit the emails. And if you see, this is what I was talking about before. Because I put my information in the profile, the signature is already there, right? So I don't even have to fill that out. It's just taking that for me already. And I want to show you how you could, example, for example, link a this data sheet that we were looking at before. Um, so, because it's about the email security services that we provide, let's link it here on next generation um, email services. Uh, first, sorry I forgot to say, you have to click the little pencil to edit, and then it'll let you edit, and you can basically edit every, anything that you like. So, we're going to do it here, and then you're going to hit this little link right there to link and we're going to do an internal asset and we're going to upload this from the document gallery so we're going to again do what we've done before for a few other things we're going to upload we're going to go and look for this pdf that we personalized and once it's there, hold on. So the internal asset, go to the document gallery, should show here now. Here's my sample PDF. 
and you hit the plus button, and there you'll see the URL. So it's attached. When you send this email and people click, it'll open the PDF, right? You don't have to attach it, it's gonna be there. You hit save. Like I said, you could choose to change more things here. I'm just gonna, because of time, just gonna click through to um, the sender. So you can, again, change the from, change the reply to, that's up to you. And then we go to contacts. And you can add from a list. Um, and let's look for the list that I uploaded today. I'm not seeing it here. Here it is. It's called import. Okay. So I want to add from the list. The list has been added. And if you see here, here's my list. So I can choose who to add to this email just by clicking here. You could add, remove whoever you like. Or you could select them all and hit add. Um, so now that they're all added, you also have two options. You can schedule this to start on a specific day, for example. Um, say you don't want to send it today. You say you want to schedule it to start on November 9th at, I don't know, 3 p.m. And you can select the end date too based on the days of the delay that you've um, set, right? So you can definitely leave it here and schedule it at your convenience. So if you're working on a lot of marketing um, efforts that you wanna just leave set up, you can do that. Or if it's something that you want to just immediately run, you hit run, the email will go out, the first one, by the, when, when you hit run, and then depending on the delay that you set, the email will go out so many days later, the second one, right? And that's how you set up an email drip. Make sure you hit finish, and that's it. The drip is created and it's ready to go. And if you go back um, to our mini kit here, I wanna show you also how to set up a landing page. Now, a landing page is something that you could use maybe if you're running an ad campaign and you wanna drive traffic there, or you could just have this landing page because you want um, to have some specific messaging about product there, and from there you want partners to contact you. You can, you can do that. We have several landing page templates. I'm gonna show you how to use this one right here. And again, it's pretty simple. We have the guide for you, right? So you can have that guide there for consultation. It'll walk you through the steps. And then right next to it is the actual resource. So I'm going to show you. See, it's already pulled up my logo. That looks tiny here. Um, and you can, it's showing up already edited. I think I might have worked on this before, which is why it's already edited. Let me pull it up again to, um, to do the setup. So it's not letting me do it now for some reason. Let me So I worked on this one before. Let me go to another landing page and show you how to set it up. There we go. Now it's showing. Okay. So it's the settings. that I wasn't clicking exactly on the settings. Okay. So important thing when you land here, if you want to edit it, you have to unlock the design. This little lock here. Otherwise it's locked and you're not going to be able to, like if you try to edit, it's not going to let you. So now the design is unlocked. First thing here on this, um, on this top part, 
You could have like a boilerplate or a little summary that you might want to add there. In this case, I'm not going to use this text, so I am just going to um, delete it. So the text is no longer there. You could change basically anything that you like. Um, the size, the position, the banner in the background, um, you can do all of that. Um, you could change the text if you like. This is just a landing page about advanced email security because this whole campaign is about advanced email security. Um, and here I'm going to show you how to set up, for example, the CTA buttons. So you can choose to add different things to your call to action buttons. You could change it. So for example, if this coloring doesn't go with your brand, this is the place where you would change the coloring. Um, and you can, you can do different things in the call to action. In this case, because this says contact us, I'm going to show you how to just add an email address, right? So you would just type in the email address that you would want um, customers to contact you from this website. It's pretty much as simple as that. Always remember to, um, to hit save when you make these changes. And this page has two um, CTA buttons, and that's usually best practice, right? Because you start at the top and maybe partners or um, customers are scrolling down. It's good to have something at the bottom towards the end where they're like done reading your information, and the process is the same. Um, go to the button, you hit edit. Again, anything you want to change here, you could just change the text if you wanted and not have it be contact us. You could Use whatever you want, change the color, and again, uh, to link the call to action, you hit the link here. Um, we're going to use an email address, and then just type it in. And always make sure you save your changes. And if you're not changing anything else and you're all set, Make sure to lock your design so that nothing else is, um, is changed, and you hit save. Now you've saved your page, and it's ready to go. Um, and you can preview it, if you like. So there, the page is already set up. And there's two things that you can do. You can get your iframe code and put that into your web page. Or we also provide a URL that you can customize and you can use that URL. So those are the two options that, that are available. OK, now I want to move on to web banners. Um, and I'm going to do this fairly quickly because I want to make sure that I have time to show you other stuff. So we have quite a few web banners here that are already um, available in different sizes. You can, um, depending on what you're going to use it for, you can choose the size. And if you open that web banner, you can go to the web banner editor. So if you put your logo in before, it should already be in the web banner. So the logo is there already. You could choose to edit this and make changes. You could add a CTA button if you wanted. The editor lets you do that. You have to unlock the design before you start um, editing anything. But it does let you do that. And once you're ready, you can save it. You finish, and then, again, it'll provide you, as with the landing pages, two options. A URL, which is personal, you can personalize it, by the way, right? So if you don't want like this long gibberish at the end, you can change it to something that is easier. Or you can get the iframe code to use um, directly on your web page, so you have that. And you could use these, for example, for ad campaigns and things like that. And also, you could just download it and save the image as, right? If you want to use it on something else, those web banners are going to be available for you. OK, 
Um, now, oops, sorry about that. I think we're gonna have, we have a fourth poll coming up. It's gonna come up in a second. There we go, okay. So now that I've walked you through some of these tools and you've seen that they're fairly simple, I just would like to know what, which of these would you be most, most likely to try? So awesome, I see the campaign kit was something that you liked. All right, that's great. Um, there's something else that I wanna show you. Um, I wanna show you social media drips because I'm looking at the time, we might have enough to go through them. This is something that is very easy for you to leverage. There's templates already created in the portal and basically social media drips are two or more posts about a specific topic that you can schedule to go in Twitter, LinkedIn, or Facebook. The cards will show you what they're available for and how many posts that we have. And let me show you how to schedule one of these. So this one, for example, it says it has three posts that you could use either in Facebook, in Twitter, or on LinkedIn. Um, let's set these up really quickly. Um, you can change the name if you want. Otherwise, just click next. At the beginning, remember I told you we should set up our social media accounts? This is why, so that you don't have to do it here when you're trying to set up your, um, your account. So because I only have Facebook and Twitter on this account, we'll uh, remove LinkedIn. Then we go to messages and timing. And for this, because this is a drip, what I want you to do is to go to specific day and to set up the different days that you would want this to go out because there are days and times that posts might work better for you. You might have already identified that, so I recommend that you use it this way. And if you, you choose the post, you select the date, so say for example, we wanna start this Thursday at 9.30, you set that up there. Um, you can view the preview of how this would look. So there it is, the copy, the image, and how it would look. You can change the copy if you like, right? This is just something we're proposing based on the image, but again, this is completely editable for you. Um, and you hit save. And you do the same for all of them, right? So with the first one we did uh, Thursday, then maybe the other one you wanna do on a Tuesday, And there's your preview again, right, of the copy that we provided, of the image. This at the bottom is not gonna show. Don't worry about that. This is just right now in the, in the display. So once you set up the preferences, you hit next, and you have your last one. And you want that maybe to go out a couple days later, a different time. You can always preview it to make sure everything's okay. And you save your setup. Okay, and if you wanna make sure that everything is okay, you can double check here that it's the date and times that you've selected for the first post, for the second post, and for the third post. So everything is good to go. And now we're going to go to Um, social director here, when it loads, it's just gonna show you, you the people in your account that you maybe want to also be able to control this posting. You could add them here, right, in case you need to make any changes or you want someone else to be able to, um, to support with this. And once you're done, you click finish. And now you are going to either run or schedule your campaign. Because we've selected specific dates, 
Here's where I would say you need to schedule this, right? You don't want to run it now. We're setting this on a specific schedule. So we want to schedule it. And also important, you can, you know, you can select days that you don't want to post at all, right? Maybe weekends don't work well. You could um, unmark those. You could select a time range. And in this case, um, we were going to start on the 10th, so you have to make sure that that date matches what you, um, what you selected in your, in your scheduling. And hold on, it didn't take the 10th, there we go. All right, and now you see it changed to scheduled. So that's already scheduled for you. So come the 10th, at the date and time that you set, the first um, post will be done. Whether you selected LinkedIn or Facebook, it'll be automatically done for you. And on the other days, without you having to go back in here or anything, it'll also post. Okay, now um, up next we also have our content hub. I wanna quickly run you through that. We have a couple minutes for uh, showing you the great assets that we have in the Content Hub. This is an asset library where you can find content for you, but also content for your partners. Let me take you right there. You go to Content Hub, View Assets, and here it'll show you assets, again, that are relevant to you in the languages that you're selected um, for your uh, partner type and you'll find um, anything from data sheets to training videos. So let's do a small search here, for example. If you're looking for training, it'll pull everything related to training. So you'll see our quick start guides here will be easy for you to find. They're all listed here under training, for example. Um, we have videos also, tutorial videos about all of these tools or two minute videos that walk you through the steps. You would find them here as well. So this is Content Hub is where you find all of the assets that we have. And again, every week this is updated. So we have new stuff coming on here constantly. All right, I think we have our last poll ready to go. Okay. So I really want to understand what type of assets you find most useful when you uh, want to share stuff with your customers. Is it data sheets? Are you looking for product decks or pitch decks or flyers? What is most useful to you to go to market? All right, product decks right there at the top. Still shifting around. All right, awesome, so decks. Decks are something you find really useful. Um, we have a few on there, um, so make sure to check out the content hub and see what we have available there in terms of decks. Um, for our final uh, point today, I want to show you one more resource. And this is not a marketing resource. I have to be clear on that. But it's something that I want you to be aware of so that you can push it to your technical or to your sales teams. We talked earlier that what we're trying to do when we're marketing as an MSP is to gain trust, right? And what better than to gain trust than for our customer to see the product actually working. So we have this great resource in the portal that is a demo lab. It's completely free of charge. It's available from registered level onward, so we don't have a limitation on partner level on this. And it is a virtual on-demand access to test newly released product features to explore the functionality and basically to do de all the demos that you need. So I want you to, show, I want you to uh, keep this in mind because I think this can be a really great closing tool. This can be a really great asset when you're trying to show the customer to gain their trust and show that the product works. 
Um, and I'm going to show you, because this is technical and not marketing, I have a short video that I want to play for you so that you see how easily it works. Parker should experience the power of the current cyber protect lab and become an expert through continuous testing in the current demo lab. Currently, this tool is only available for technical and administrative users for authorized gold and platinum level. However, this tool will soon be available to all partner levels, so stay tuned for an update. To access it, head to the navigation menu and click on the demo. The lab is free of charge and easily accessible and provides on demand access to test new features, explore available functionality, or conduct product demonstrations for prospective clients. Before getting started, make sure you review the use policy by clicking on this button. Additionally, there are the following rules for usage. This lab is for testing and demo purposes only and is not designed for any production usage. Each session is limited to two hours and no changes will be saved after the session is over. Each partner account has a total of 30 hours per quarter. Only one user per partner can access the lab simultaneously, and the session will automatically close after 30 minutes of user inactivity. When you're ready, click the Access Demo Lab button. Once the page loads, click Start Learning Now. This will redirect you to the lab. In the new window, click the Start Lab button. It may take a few minutes for your virtual lab to start, so be patient with it. Once the lab loads, you'll find instructions here. The first thing you'll want to do is open up the credentials uh, text box over here that will give you your credentials. You can then log into the browser uh, and then use those credentials to access cloud.acronis.com. Once you've logged in, You'll be asked to accept the terms and conditions of the end user interface. And then you'll be presented with a screen. You can minimize instructions here, and then you can choose from whichever portal you need to go to. So the management portal will uh, allow you to manage uh, users that you add to the system uh, and the number of quotas. But ideally, what you'll probably want to do is click on the cyber protection button where you'll give a full accounting of how the backup and cyber protection features work within the system. Uh, you will be presented with a system that is ready to take your first device. And because we're providing you with a virtual machine here, uh, you can then download the Windows agent and then launch it and, uh, and start the installer process right there and then and start uh, getting your Windows agent uploaded so that you can start using this uh, to create protection plans, do backups, do recoveries, and so forth. Well, that's it. Uh, enjoy using the system. Okay, so as you can see, it's very simple. It's available there for your technical audience. So if you have a customer that wants to see this working, you can set up uh, just a full demo for them there. And now I'm going to just jump to some quick Q&A, if anybody has questions. Yes? So there can only be one admin? Like if I set it up first, I'm the only one that can be the admin? There's one admin, yes. <coughs> yes. Any other questions? What, what you can have is dual roles. So for example, I know some teams are not really big and you might have someone who is sales and marketing, you could have sales and marketing, or you could have tech and sales. Okay, the reason why I ask, because my partner, he's also an admin, but when he puts in a user, I can't see it. Even though I'm the super admin. But if he puts something in, I can't see it. So that shouldn't be, we might need to check your account specifically, but okay. Um, there should be only one admin because the one admin can see everything, right? And you can also see um, support tickets and other things done by other people in your company because you are the admin, right? 
Okay, so I don't see any more questions. Um, I hope you found today's session useful, that you were able to see that these are tools that are available for you and that they're easy to use. You don't have to remember everything I showed you here today. We have the quick start guides for all of these tools. And additionally, additionally we have the two minute video tutorials for all of these. So you can also check those out. They're very similar to the demo lab video that I just showed. So they're available for you in the portal. Um, and finally, if you have any questions or any ideas or want to reach out to me directly, please, please feel free to do that. I'm very happy to understand um, your needs about going to market, any questions that you might have, or just to help you reach your business goals. So thank you very much.